tension is a state of remarkable excitability or a very intense intellectual effort, sometimes with strong anxiety. And, of course, in this regard, we are talking about tensions of the mind. Sometimes, tension may also lead to tragic contrast, the one that, for example, can be the forerunner of a disaster. Think about opera, think about melodrama. Here in Italy, we are very experts. I mean, tension is an inner condition marked by a lack of balance or harmony. In ceramics, instead, surface tension is a cohesive force, the topic of today's episode. We will talk about it with particular reference to ceramic glazes. We will try to understand more closely the role that the surface tension plays with respect to the correct application of glaze suspensions. And in this perspective, we will try to look at all chemicals that can act or affect it in order to reach the proper parameters to avoid problems. I am Davide Trentini, and this is Apparently Invisible, Chemistry and Ceramics. Let's start from the beginning. What is the surface tension? How can we define it in simple words without being trivial? Well, we could try by saying that surface tension is the tendency of a liquid surface at rest to shrink into the minimal surface area possible. In different words, in physics, the surface tension of a fluid is the mechanical cohesion tension of the particles on its outer surface. And thanks to their cohesive force, glaze particles, speaking about ceramics, that are on the interface liquid air are bound, developing an invisible film. And such force is precisely called surface tension. Okay, not very easy. So I give you an example, a very easy example to better understand it. This is the classical and universal example usually used to explain this hard concept. We have just said cohesive force between particles. And, this is, and these are uh, the keywords. Good. Think about a glass of water. Think also about leaning on it very gently, a coin. What happened? The coin remains on the water without sinking. One more example. Think about a mosquito that walk on the surface of a lake. This happens, the coin and the mosquito on the water surface, exactly because of the cohesive force of the superficial particles of the water, that is, our fluid. Good. After this short introduction, let's see what kind of role the surface tension plays in respect of the glaze suspensions. You need to know that, in general, to get a proper glaze application, it is always important to work on the fluid surface tension by decreasing or, more generally, adjusting it until you reach the proper values according to the chosen application system that is, spray, vela, or bell application systems. To do that, there are on the market several chemicals that, depending on their chemical nature and their formulation, are able to solve many problems affecting the surface tension and acting, for example, as leveling agents, that is, surfactants and wetting agents, anti-foaming, that is, deformers, or compatibilizers, in case of rebalancing phenomena. Regardless of their specific action, they all directly or indirectly act on the surface tension. Okay, before addressing these different categories or families of chemical, it is important to underline that many organic molecules in aqueous solution are generally able to decrease the water surface tension within which glaze particles are suspended. And just to make an example, some glaze dispersants, beside their main dispersant action, are also marked by significant wetting properties. But I stop here with this short note and I immediately address the first category of chemicals able to affect the surface tension, and in my opinion, the most important, wetting agents. From a chemical point of view, wetting agents are made up of organic molecules, partially or slightly water-soluble. We are talking about block copolymers, acids, modified natural fats, etc. They are able to act at the interface between ceramic support and glaze 
at the same time at the interface between glaze and air. The leveling action that they promote precisely derives from the decreasing of the surface tension value at the interface glaze air, that is, the superficial interface. The lowering of the surface tension promoted by the adding agent usually turns into a deagglomeration of the suspended solid particles, helping their homogeneous dispersion within the system and therefore developing an outstanding leveling action on the glaze. But the question is, as usual, how do they do it? What kind of mechanism do they develop? This is more or less what happens. The lowering of the surface tension causes the water to enter between the suspended and agglomerated solid particles that keep air trapped inside, we could say. The very high water surface tension prevents the water molecules to enter between agglomerates, limiting or even avoiding the particles' hydration process. And in other words, and more simple words, water does not wet solid particles. And the wetting agent? The wetting action on the particles makes them to be free and to move and slip within the system, properly leveling on the raw ceramic support. I also want to add that since they are partially soluble, wetting agents promote a proper leveling of the glaze without producing side effects such as, for example, foaming phenomena. On the other side, however, the low solubility of the system may sometimes lead to the formation of pinholes or tiny surface depression. Good, let's now change the subject, addressing two more categories of chemicals that are usually involved when you need to work on the surface tension, and we do it starting from surfactants. Surfactants are high-performing soluble products that, however, can also lead to foaming phenomena. By definition, these are products able to lower the surface tension due to their molecular structure that consists of a hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tail. After a surfactant has been added to a solution, this is what happens on the fluid surface. The tail, because of its hydrophobic nature, remains outside the water, we could say exposed to the air, while the hydrophilic head is soaked in water. In this position, the head produces a distance, we could say, between the water's superficial molecules, decreasing their surface tension. We have to say also that, unlike wetting agents, since surfactants are totally water-soluble, they usually do not give rise to defects such as pinholes or dimples. However, as we already said, they are highly foaming and not very easy to manage. This is the reason why they are not usually involved in ceramic production, being replaced by wetting agents that can be more easily handled according to the production requirements. But how do surfactants produce foam? And what is the structure of the foam bubble? I take it from some far away, but then we get it, please believe me. As you know, to avoid sedimentation phenomena, glazes and ceramic suspensions are usually under constant stirring by means of specific systems that tend to incorporate air within the fluid, thus facilitating foaming phenomena. Foam bubbles produced by surfactants are nothing but spheric films made up of water molecules that are bound, or we could say linked together, by surfactants themselves. In ceramics, when the glazed watery suspension is under stirring, the air enters the suspension, especially with high speed, and bubbles rise up to the surface. The use of deformers against surfactants action can partially or totally solve the problem, but the equilibrium is always quite unstable. On one side, in fact, deformers work on the foaming promoted by surfactants, and on the other side, the formers must be controlled and carefully managed to avoid defects due to its water insolubility. And so, how can we remove foam? And what is the mechanism? Well, very shortly, all the formers, unlike water, are non-polar, and therefore they are water insoluble. Once they have come in contact with the foam bubble, they break the bubble stability acting on the molecules of the surfactants, breaking their tails and therefore exploding the bubble.
And with this explosion, even today the episode has come to an end. And so, as usual, I remind you that you can listen to the previous episodes on the main platforms, such as Spotify or Apple Podcasts, or, if you want, on our app, that you can download for free on Apple Store or Google Play by typing Z and S Ceramco, or apparently invisible. Trying to be relaxed and without any tension, I'll see you next time. See you soon.